Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today we're going to take a look at um, using adaptive layers to get better looking terrain. Uh, specifically, we're going to take a look at this using Bamboo Studio. Um, but these techniques will apply to uh, Orca Slicer or uh, Prusa Slicer. Uh, they're both basically the same as Bamboo Studio when it comes to this. Um, before we get into this, if you would, please click that like and subscribe button. And if you've got time, leave me a quick comment. Those things really do help me with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it doesn't promote small creators like myself like it used to. So those three things really go a long way to uh, boosting the signal and helping me get these videos in front of the most people possible. So if you like what I do here, if you want me to keep doing them, uh, if it helps you out, please consider helping me out and just click the like button, click the subscribe button, and leave a comment. So thank you very much, and we'll get into the video now. Um, real quick, what we're going to do is take a look at, to start with, a stock Bamboo Studio setting. And we're just going to, one of their pre-made slicer settings, and we're just going to go with the uh, 0.2 millimeter standard uh, and slice that up. Uh, not going to change anything except for the infill. I'm going to bump that down to 10%. Uh, you can even get away with 5% on our models usually. Um, but we'll do that up and it's going to come out to roughly an hour and 48 minutes to print this. So we'll go ahead and export that slice. And get that printed up here and take a look at it. And it looks nice. Uh, it doesn't look really any better than what you'd get off of an ender. So let's see if we can't improve this a little bit. What we're going to do is take a look at using adaptive layers or variable layer height. And what this will do, and we're just going to try the automatic setting here, but we're going to go up here under the uh, printer uh, setting and go to extruder and it's set for a minimum layer height of 0 0.08 and a max layer height of 0.28. And I'm going to click the adaptive button there. And everything you see in green here is the thinnest layer height, 0 0.08. And as it gets towards red in the red range, uh, that's 0.28. So what it's doing is it's making certain layers thicker and certain layers thinner to accommodate for additional detail in the high detail areas. And we'll just go ahead and export that real quick and see how that prints up and how it looks. So on the left is your 0.2 standard that we did the first time around. On the right is the uh, automatically generated adaptive layers, and it does improve it quite a bit. Um, you can see that surface detail. You don't get the stair stepping nearly as much with it. Uh, it looks much nicer, but we went from an hour 48 print time to two hours and 17 minutes, almost a half hour longer. Um, which is fine if you really want nice detail and you just want to do it with one click this is the way to go but can we get that even better can we get that time down uh, with maintaining uh, how nice these prints look um, and I think we can so let's try another technique here this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna input custom settings custom ranges for minimum and maximum layer heights and we're going to customize where those layer heights are adjusted. So again, go up to the top left where the printer selection is, go under extruder, and we're going to change the minimum to 0.1 and the maximum layer height to 0.3. Now, when you are customizing adaptive layers, what you are doing is actively selecting what layers will be what layer heights, okay? So when we set up this profile to be 0.2 layer height, that is shown here in gray. Everything gray on your model uh, will be 0.2 layer height. Then when you go in and left mouse click to begin scrubbing the green areas, the green areas are your 0.1 layer height. So what you want those areas to be are any of the top facing surfaces. Uh, the surfaces that would be very, very stair-stepped at 0.2. So you want to improve the print quality of those by having it print those at 0.1. 
Now I've done just the very top of the wall and the top of the floor. I'm not going to mess with trying to get the tops of each individual layer of stones because for one, we've seen that increases the amount of stream that needs to be cleared up and it just doesn't really improve the look of the model that much. So we can get away with just doing the very top of the wall and the floor and that will help speed things up. Finally, we're going to tell it to print the base area at point three. You're not going to see this when the tiles are linked up, so you can save quite a bit of time by printing this at point three instead of point two. So this is what your custom scrubbing should look like. It should go from red and then right as the top surface of the floor begins, you uh, or the upward facing areas, those should immediately transition into green and then gray for the rest of the model until you get to the very top of the wall and then that will be green once again. Next, we're gonna go in and click uh, the adaptive layers or variable layer height is what it's called in here. And if you left mouse click on this graph over here to the right, you can select where the green areas are. Now these are your thin areas. These will be the areas that go down and print at 0.1 layer height. The default layer height is 0.2, which is the gray. So we're just going to scrub these in, and I'm just right or left mouse clicking and scrubbing up and down. And then to get the red areas, which is your 0.3, I'm going to hold down the control key while I'm holding the left mouse button down. And then go ahead and re-slice it. And now we're looking at a print time of only two hours and three minutes, which is much, much better. Um, so we'll go ahead and we will print this out. Get that exported and throw it on the printer and let's see what happens here. Now, if you're looking at this, the straight up adaptive that we did prior is on the left. The custom adaptive is on the right. Now, what are we seeing here? Um, on the left, where we had uh, it automatically do it, the layers in the middle of the uh, stones were actually made thicker than 0.2 in a lot of cases because they were straight up. But that makes those layer lines more visible. So the automatic adaptive on the left doesn't look as good as the one we just did where we selected the layers, layer variation positions. Um, you also have more stringing on the automatic adaptive because it's trying to vary it between the uh, stone layers and stuff, and that's creating issues with the retractions and creating more stringing. So not only have we decreased the print time, but we've also improved the print quality by going this route. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We've, we've gotten to a point where we've got a dramatic increase in surface quality with only a 15 minute increase in print time, but we can get that even faster and maintain the same quality. And how we're gonna do that is over on the left under infill, you're going to change it from grid to lightning. Lightning infill will just generate infill where it's needed to support top layers. At 10% infill, we're not doing this for strength anyways. And with the number of shells on this and stuff, the model's going to print fine. It's going to be plenty sturdy. But with lightning infill, it's just generating infill where it's absolutely needed to support the top layer. So this is going to print very, very fast now. So we'll go ahead, slice it up, and export it. The print time on this is only 1 hour and 53 minutes versus an hour 48 for the stock settings. So we've only increased print time by 5 minutes, but we're maintaining the super high print quality of the custom adaptive layers. So as you can see here, this has the same quality as the custom adaptive layers but by just changing that infill, we're cutting that print time down dramatically. This is only five minutes more than what you were getting with the off-the-shelf uh, bamboo uh, 0.2 millimeter uh, slicer profile. So five minutes more, and the quality is superb. So real quick, let's take a look at how this works on both the A1 versus the A1 Mini. And I've run this on both of them, and I can't tell the difference. They are identical. 
Uh, so these settings will work great if you have a Bamboo uh, Lab A1, an A1 Mini, and I'm betting they will also work on the Core XY machines, uh, but I can't verify that. I don't own those two machines. So uh, if you're looking to print terrain, this is really a great option to get print quality up and without a lot of increase in print time. So I hope this helped you. Uh, if you would, please click that like and subscribe button and leave me a quick comment.